So in the face of the coronavirus pandemic, medical schools have had to adapt. And as the outbreak escalated over the summer, some of the challenges uh, training new doctors to operate in the new world of uncertainty may have actually triggered a reckoning in the field of medicine. A new article in Time magazine takes an in-depth look at how U.S. medical schools are training a post-pandemic generation of doctors. The author of that piece joins me now. Jamie Ducharme is a staff writer uh, covering health. So, Jamie, thank you so much for joining me. I thought the article was excellent. Um, oh, and you. I have always felt, <laughs> so I live in Philadelphia, and it, you know, Philadelphia is a town of eds and meds, right? Education and medicine is what kind of runs this town. So I meet a lot of doctors and doctors in training, and I've always felt like medical school was a little antiquated, that there must be ways to do things better. In comes this pandemic, as you point out in your article, and medical schools are forced to adapt to a new reality. What were some of the basic things that they were, un were unable to do, like gathering indoors, um, that they, they changed um, for better or for worse? Give us the highlight reel, if you will. Sure. At first, thank you for having me. It's great to be here this morning. Um, you're absolutely right. I mean, from the very basic things like gathering indoors for class, um, medical schools had to change everything. So many classes moved online. Um, many classes, you know, there are lots of skills that you have to teach hands on in medical school from drawing blood to taking an EKG. And schools had to find ways to do that virtually. Um, one school I spoke to, Geisinger in Pennsylvania, actually built what they called an EICU so that students could watch doctors who were in the hospital perform these exams um, and kind of pretend that they were there with them. But there were other challenges. I mean, students are usually on clinical rotations in hospitals and, and they couldn't do that. So hospitals really had to adapt on the fly and figure out how to give students adequate training um, while still keeping them safe and their patients safe. Yeah, and you point out in your article that in some cases, um, you know, these changes may actually be better for certain medical students, particularly in the first year when it's lecture after lecture after lecture, uh, a student that maybe has some physical challenges, being able to just sort of stay at home in an environment that you can navigate easier and, and watch all these lectures a lot easier than trying to make it into a classroom. Um, but then there was this other thing that happened as the pandemic was unfolding. This country uh, was going through a reckoning when it comes to race and racism. And new doctors are also sort of dealing with that conversation. And you write in your article, there's a quote from uh, Kaiser Permanente's uh, medical school founding dean, Mark Schuster, who said, we need to make sure that our students understand our history. He's talking about centuries of racism. How does one even attempt that kind of fundamental reset during a pandemic that has paralyzed many educational institutions? You know, it's not easy. Um, the medical system in so many ways has been affected by racism throughout its history. Um, many people of color still do not trust the medical establishment um, because of a long history of experimentation and inadequate access to care, um, as well as, you know, the, the more everyday effects of systemic racism, like poverty and segregation. So medical schools have a really tall order, I think, in, in help in trying to fix many of those issues. Um, it's not new. Schools have been trying to do this for some time. But I do think the pandemic and this recognition that black and brown Americans just are not faring well right now, um, as well as the racial justice movement this summer, really kickstarted some change. Um, so students that I've spoken to have said that race and social determinants of health now come up whenever they discuss a patient. It's not like one lecture that's thrown into a class. It's really woven throughout mm -hmm. the curriculum. Um, others are looking for ways that they can evaluate students on how well they learn things like cultural competency and the ability to take care of patients of diverse backgrounds. Um, so there's no mistake, there's still a lot of work to be done, but I do think the conversation um, has started and has taken on a new urgency, which is a great first step. Um, so some schools are better than others when it came to dealing with the challenges that the pandemic uh, introduced. Uh, you write about missed opportunities for, med for the medical school system during the pandemic. Can you kind of point out some of the more glaring ones? Sure. I think probably the most glaring was in terms of the MCAT, which is the exam that students have to take to get admitted to medical school. Um, it's a long exam. It's seven hours long. You have to go sit in a room and just take it um, with other students. And many incoming students 
kind of made the point that it's not safe to be sitting in these exam rooms for seven hours with strangers. And they called on schools to, um, to waive that requirement. And a few did. There was a handful that decided to do that, but many pressed forward with it as normal. Um, so I'd say that was, you know, one misstep in the eyes of many students. I think another is just not every school had the resources and the, the infrastructure to kind of seamlessly move their classes online. And I did speak to some students who felt like their learning has suffered and they, they have not been able to train mm -hmm. in the way that they would hope to. Um, so it's a big challenge. It's, it's you know certainly not an easy problem to solve, but I think it's an important one, especially considering how virtual practice, uh, medical practice is likely to be in the future. Uh, you know, it's been said that sometimes uh, there's opportunity and chaos, and um, this pandemic has certainly introduced a lot of chaos to a lot of our institutions that have been slowly changing. Perhaps uh, when the dust settles, we will have medical schools that are better than they were before. I encourage everyone who gets an opportunity to read your article. It's on Time's website. You can check it out there. Uh, Jamie Ducharme, thank you so much. Thank you.